pussy, nigga. Oh, nine and next to see, nigga. Fuck with me, dog. Pull up on the scene of some luxury, dog. That's me. And my Kobe, yeah. 24, and my clothes is real. Iceberg, fuck the diamond, yeah. And that lake shit, like Savi, yeah. This that Juan Carlos and Javi, yeah. Raw coke, trade off the boat. I'm a fly nigga, took a wing off. Married to the game, took my ring off. That's me. We can have a bling off. Throw the auto tune on, have a sing off. If the pussy ain't mine, and I speed off. It's I don't even fuck with hoes, rather beat off. No lotion, tips got the potion. Fuck the commotion. I'm out in the ocean, a nigga in motion. All this devotion. Got a nigga up in his piss like he floating. Go grill shining. Check out my limb. I'm wrong with the. It's Monday. So that means three things. One, I ain't your MCM. Two, it's Mamba Monday. And three, it's the A24 podcast. And I am your host, the product of poverty's environment, the innovator of ignorance, the Pope, Chuck, Paul. And today, on this Monday, I can say to you, the Los Angeles Lakers are now the new NBA motherfucking champions. <laughs> Shout out to the whole Laker organization. Now, I know I am not a Los Angeles Laker, but I've been riding for my guys since the Nick Van Exel days. Cedric Sabalos, when Del Harris was coach. Excuse me. Um... Eddie Jones, Sedale 3, who, who else, who else, who else, the Vladi Divas days I'm talking about, this is, this is after Magic retired, and then when Kobe came, then we got Derek Fisher, um, I think I mentioned already, Eddie Jones, uh, who else, do, can I name, of course, Shaq, and then Robert Ory, and Rick Fox, then, then, then the down years when we when we had ended up getting Bynum, then we and he ended up getting hurt. Then we got Pau Gasol. Then we had Dwight the first go around. Then we had Steve Nash. Remember Xavier Henry. I can go on for all the Lakers who've gone and came through that locker room. But today, we motherfucking champs. Shout out to Braun. Shout out to AD. Shout out to my second favorite. Pope, Contavious Caldwell, who came through. And fuck all y'all who've been hating on, him, hating on him all season and last year. Shout out to Danny Green. Fuck y'all who, who was hating on him. Shout out to Kyle Kuzma. Fuck y'all who made that um, petition saying that he don't deserve a ring. And shout out for Dwight, to, to Dwight Howard for taking a lesser role. JaVel McGee. And I'm going to give props to Frank Vogel too. Because motherfucker was trying to say he can't coach. Kid gonna take his spot. You feel me? Shout out to the Lakers front office. Because after Magic left, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know. But the Lakers GM, he pulled it together. He made that trade. He got his Davis. And the rest is history. There was times where I even thought like, yo, I don't know how we're going to do this. It seemed like every player the Lakers would get, Clippers would, do, would make a chess move. I remember last summer, free agency, as soon as it started, I see Kawhi Leonard go to the Clippers and then Paul George. And I'm like, oh shit, okay, cool. But at the end of the day, I was like, yo, they still play in our building. Staples Center. And look what the fuck happened to them. Denver got them the fuck out of here. Then they coach got the fuck up out of there. And now they about to get the fuck up out of Staples Center. Like I said, they're getting the whole new arena. To losing. But it's ain't about the blippers. It's about the motherfucking Los Angeles Lakers. Championship number 17 for this franchise. You know what I'm saying? This for Jerry Buss. This for Chick Hearn. 
This for Gary V. This for Phil Handy. This for Kobe and Gigi. This championship means so much to all of Laker Nation. I just want to let y'all know that. This shit means a lot. Especially for somebody who hasn't celebrated a Laker championship. And Lord knows how long. I mean, well, I do know how, how long. I mean, like, 10 years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, this feels great, you know. I wish I was in L.A. right now. Because I would have been out, look, I would have been covered in COVID. I would have been out there in them streets. But I would have quarantined the day after for, for like two weeks, you know what I'm saying? Because I noticed some nasty motherfuckers out there. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Bron is still on my Mount Rushmore. I got him at number three. MJ, Kobe, and LeBron. Personally. This is my personal list. Not yours. But at the end of the day, if you say MJ is number one, and Kobe is like his Xerox copy, then he's number two to me. I mean, LeBron is a freak of an athlete. Could do a little bit of, of, of everything. But like as far as skill-wise to me, Kobe hands down. As far as the footwork, able to get a shot off anywhere. He's an offensive juggernaut. LeBron... I always said to me, he's like a way better Larry Johnson for the simple fact he was big. He could handle the ball. Decent jump shot. Or you can even say LeBron's more like Scotty Pippen with muscles. But more of a scorer. Or you can say he's more like Magic Johnson with muscles and a better jump shot. All different players. MJ is like Cream of the crop. Never lost in the finals. Game has no weakness, no flaws. Decent. He can shoot threes. Jump shot, fade away. Post up. Inside, outside. Former defensive player of the year. Same with Kobe. But LeBron, see, he plays more in the front court too sometimes. So of course he would average more rebounds, the ball's mostly in his hands, you know, he likes to be the playmaker, the facilitator, you know. But one thing that pisses me off with LeBron fans, it's no knock saying like, yo, if somebody else's list has him at three, or even two, it's, some, it's not, your list could be your list, my list can be my list. It's like if someone asks, do you like chicken or turkey? And you say chicken, and they get mad you don't like turkey. I mean, like, I like turkey, but I like chicken better. <laughs> That's just my logic. Like I always say, I like using common sense. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to have the same ideals. You feel me? But LeBron is definitely a beast. I miss the put Kobe before him. That's no slight. And one honorable mention I have to talk about is Alan motherfucking Iverson. Because I just watched his interview on All the Smoke. And one thing about AI, man, that dude is passionate. Like, when you hear him talk, his struggle, you feel me? Like Kobe said, be happy he ain't 6'6". Six, six. But he was a motherfucking monster. Cause I seen AI play in Philly. Hell, I seen Kobe when he was number eight play live. I've seen Kobe number 24 play live. I seen LeBron on the Cavs before he left play live. I've seen LeBron on Miami play live. You feel me? Like, I've, I've seen your favorite player, favorite player play. Only guy who I haven't seen play that I, that I like was MJ and Shaq. That's it. 
I done seen Stockton Malone. I done seen Westbrook, KD, and Harden play together in OKC. But yeah, man, congrats to the Lakers, you know. Congrats to Braun, AD. I still got MJ, Kobe, LeBron in that order. And next season, whenever it starts, it's going to be a lot harder. Because you got the Splash Brothers coming back. You got KD and Kyrie on the East Coast. Milwaukee's still going to be Milwaukee. We know now what to expect from Miami. Oh, we know the fuck now. You know? We see Denver. We see Utah. And we've seen Phoenix go undefeated in the bubble. So this NBA season that's, that's coming... Next year, January, I believe, oh, it's going to be fucking crazy. I cannot wait. And moving on. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Tory Lanez and Meg. I don't even want to talk about this shit because I think they're both stupid. But I'm going to keep this kind of brief. Tory has been officially charged. For his role in the shooting of Meg the Stallion's feet. Although. He's just been charged. He hasn't been convicted. Excuse me. We still don't know what really went down. We don't know who's guilty or what. But again. I will say this. Why I say they are both stupid. You are going to a famous person's house party. Why do you need to bring your gun? You have a security guard. Why isn't he carrying the gun? I always say, if I have to bring a gun somewhere, I shouldn't be there. Meg, I know you like these thug type dudes, but I hope your next dude isn't a gun toting motherfucker with an attitude. Women, choose your men correctly. Check your man. If he's leaving outside with a hammer, tell him to leave that. Or, you stay home. Especially if someone of Meg's stature. I want y'all to think I'm victim blaming. But I am saying we got to make smarter decisions. You see this dude with a hammer? Say, nah, babe, leave that. Tori, if he did shoot her, you're a dumbass. There's not much I can say about the situation. It's just so stupid. It's like a bunch of young kids drunk doing young, dumb shit. And what confuses me, I was having a conversation with a young lady the other day, other day and she's saying, yeah, I'm like, we weren't there. She's like, Tori's guilty. I'm like, you don't even know what happened. I don't care. I believe whatever a woman says, Tori's guilty. But you went to a Chris Brown concert last year. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, this don't make sense. So, you can enjoy Chris Brown's music after he beat the shit out of Rihanna. But you want to cancel Tori. Like, this whole cancel shit is so fucking stupid. I want to cancel people who cancel people for stupid shit. You feel me? These same folks are still bumping R. Kelly ignition. So at the end of the day, to each his own. But, I'm going to say this again. We got to hold each other accountable. Cut the dumb fuck shit out. Men, keep your motherfucking hands to yourselves. I'm not saying Meg put her hands on Tori, but I'm going to say, ladies, keep your motherfucking hands to yourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, if you need a gun to go somewhere, do not go. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Even when I see Meg in the pool with her bodyguard, and he's playing with a loaded gun, and they're all drunk, I'm like, yo, what? why do people just like playing with guns? I mean, when I was younger, I had all types of guns around me, but you never, I never played around with them. Because I was taught, you don't pull one out unless you got to use it, or unless you're going to use it. 
I'm sorry. Like, you motherfuckers. Young, dumb, with too much money. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. And ah, yes. The highlight of, of, of last week. The vice presidential debate. Oh my, oh my God. Th th this was pretty good. Because the only time I really heard Kamala Harris speak was on The Breakfast Club. I never really heard Pence speak too much. But I know of him being the Indiana governor. And at the time, I believe, had the highest murder rate. And have the weakest gun laws. And that's why Chicago and neighboring cities like um, Milwaukee get their guns from and sell them and shit like that. Because of Pence's weak gun laws. But man, oh man. We heard of Black Lives Matter. We've heard all lives matter. Now all flies matter. Because apparently, while Pence was backtracking and trying to cut off Kamala Harris every fucking second, a fly sat decided to land on this shithead's head for a good two minutes. It was the funniest shit in the world. I'm watching it, and I'm like, yo. Is that a fly on his head? I'm going on Twitter. I'm looking. I'm, yo, that's a fly on this motherfucker head. <laughs> my cousin's texting me. My own girl texting me and shit. I'm like, oh, man. This is hilarious. This is hilarious. You know, and I learned a few things during the, during the debate, too. I learned what fracking was. I believe it's a, a way that you drill for oil. And it's bad for the, you know, the world. It's bad. It's bad for the world. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not good. And I thought to myself, I don't know any black frackers. Because people are saying, like, yeah, you, you guys want to wanna ban it. People will lose jobs. Let me tell you something. Fracking is something that goes down in these Midwestern states that are occupied by lots of white people. Now, it would be wrong if I said... Fuck the frackers. I don't care about your jobs if it's bad if it's bad for the um for the world and whatnot. Then fuck it. Find a new job. Go to school. Just like how the racist white folks be like, yeah, black folks need to educate themselves and go to school and find jobs. You know what then? If fracking is banned, find something else to do. I don't give a frick fraggity fuck about fracking. Oh well. <laughs> Because when black and brown people are out of jobs, they're quick to say, hey, you're on welfare, you're uneducated. I don't care about fracking. Sorry. But one thing I, I can also say about this debate, I love the way Kamala Harris handled this motherfucker Pence. She would bring up a point. He would try to cut her off. She would kindly say, excuse me. I am talking. And then when he say some bullshit, she give him that look like, nigga. And this motherfucker will just continue to try to keep going over his time. How many times does Susan have to say thank you, thank you, thank you, before you shut the fuck up? Kamala will make a point. He will get upset. I would like to answer what was said on... Um, 20 minutes ago. Nah. Answer the question right now. And it's crazy. Because remember, the other episode, I was talking about Trump, talking about all these drugs he's talking about. Before the freaking debate, he does like an infomercial in front of the White House. Talking about all these drugs being made by these companies. He's saying that he's cured. The drugs he got from Walter Reed cured him. He says more of a cure. Oh, this guy. He gonna lead some of y'all dumb supporters down a rabbit hole y'all can't get out of. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't want to debate Biden again because they want it to be um, virtual because they're afraid he still may have symptoms. Yesterday, his doctor said that he's clear to go back on the campaign trail. I'm quite sure he made his doctor say that. I'm quite sure. And during the debate, I had tweeted out, 
I didn't hear nobody say anything about legalizing marijuana, decriminalizing marijuana, and releasing prisoners who are locked up for the distribution of marijuana or the use of marijuana. And make sure that when it's legalized, they're the first to have the opportunity to open up a dispensary. Then 10 minutes later, Kamala Harris said they're going to decriminalize it. They're going to release those who are locked up for it. But nothing was said about making sure that they were the first one to have the opportunity to monetize off dispensaries, get a license to own a weed dispensary. So, we'll see, we'll see. But all in all, that debate was a lot more, I'm not going to say more professional than the last, because we had Pence trying to interrupt Kamala every fucking five seconds. But it was better than Biden and Trump. You know? So please, everybody, make sure you go out and vote November 3rd. Mail-in ballots are in person. Look, I don't give a fuck if I got to put on a, a hazmat suit, I think that's what it's called, the whole um, protective shit to go vote. I don't care. I'm going to do that. I don't know who that is outside. <laughs> but before I let go, I'll let you guys know, we're on Apple Podcasts now. A round of applause for me. Next week, we should be on Spotify. And by December, we will be on iHeartRadio. It's been a long time coming. All right? So right now, we're on Apple Podcasts. We're on YouTube. We're on Deezer, Radio Republic, I believe. Um, so next week, we'll be on Spotify. And then in December, iHeartRadio. It's a process. It's a process. We have to be on for two months before we can get on iHeartRadio. So bear with me. Like I always say, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I am the Pope Chuck Paul. And thank you for watching the A24 podcast. Lakers Nation, baby. We champions. Bitch. I'm out.